Welcome back to another sort of Convalaria video and today we are finally going to talk about the papal state stratagem. We're going to talk about why this young lady is very important but before we do all that let's go ahead and get a word from our sponsors. And today guys I want to go ahead and do today's sponsor poverty. That's right poverty. By not subscribing that's what the sponsorship is. So subscribe. All right, so this was a video that was definitely in the works. Um, I had most of it written out already, but it's it's a lot of information. This is going to be a pretty long one here, guys. Um, somewhere down the line, I will end up putting chapters in it as I update. I'm just trying to push out content, um, but let's go ahead and get into this. So the Papal State Stratagem is really a set of, I want to say it's, a, it's like two different combinations right you have about three four characters who don't who, who kind of just dishes out a lot of either buffs or debuffs and then you have a, a, about four or five other characters who are who get significantly stronger when they get three buffs and they don't have any debuffs um i'll kind of show you what i mean but what we're going to do is, is that we're going to first uh, we're going to talk about the first character, which is Angel, because Angel is kind of very important in this team or with the Papal States characters. Um, so Angel, her trait grants her three random. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Her trait grants three random level one attribute buffs to the targets for two turns after healing them. So after she gives a heal, they get three level one attribute buffs on them for up to two turns, which is really, really nice. She has a single target heal and an AOE heal that dispels one debuff. So she's always gonna be making sure that she's gonna be cleaning out, um, she's gonna be cleansing and cleaning out debuffs whenever she heals, which is really good. One of the major reasons why I even use her on my myself and then she also has a passive that heals the lowest HP percentage within three tiles of uh, with a, within a three style a three tile radius. Sorry, words are hard today. Um, she has a skill called the Protected, and you're going to see a lot of other characters who have that skill, the Protected. Um, it grants a 15% bonus attack and a 30% bonus defense when they're not affected by debuffs and if they have at least three buffs. So as long as she has three buffs on her, she doesn't have any debuffs, she gets a 15% bonus attack and a 30% bonus defense. And anyone who has the protected skill, they all have the same thing. Um, she also gets a 30% M defense aura, um, aura for um, up to two tiles. So that's really good in team compositions, team fights when you're up close, that 30% M defense is just nice against anything that has a lot of magic damage. She can dispel up to two buffs with a basic attack, or you can choose to increase the next heal by 15% up that lasts up to two turns. So deciding on, you know, deciding basically on how you want to do her basics, um, I personally do enjoy anything that dispels buffs off of anything so that I lean more towards that but she also the fact that she can give 15% more heals um, with her next heals is really nice as well and then another skill that you're going to see a lot of the papal state um, characters use is uh, flagellant yeah flagellant I think it's pronounced uh, which gives a penance stack after taking damage and each penance stack uh, decreases damage by 8% and it cannot be dispelled so it makes them th that much tankier as every time they get hit and then it also recovers one energy as long as they have penance stacks on them so really good skill um, passive to have and there's other characters who are going to have that and that's kind of like how the papal state units work is some of them are going to have flagellant some of them are going to have um the 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 protected and then you know like angel some of them are going to have both but angel is very important to that because she's just a phenomenal all-around healer her heals are really good the percentages on them are really nice if you max out her um her trait it's 
it, it, it just gives provides so much value because when you max it out her healing effect goes up to 15 percent and then um the level one attribute bus lasts for the two turns so it's just it just gives a lot of value with her heals and she's like i said like being able to dispel it makes it so that you really don't need to get the reorganized the reorganized cube on her it doesn't hurt to have it but it, you don't need it because of how good it is and if i am if i remember correctly if you do have the cube on it the cube triggers the dispel and so does her passive so she technically gets two dispels i don't know if it works i haven't tested it out i have i i use the starry sky heritage on her but if you know if it works please leave a comment down below and let me know if you tested it out and if you've seen it all right now the next character we're going to talk about is suppression suppression is one of my favorite characters um he's a an amazing defender he has a trait that lowers the magic damage taken and before taking active attacks by enemies within three tiles from the front or the side, he deals a preempt attack that dishes piercing damage that equals 60% of his magic defense. So as long as he has a like a really, you know, a lot of magic defense, that 60% piercing damage is pretty good. But my favorite part is the fact that he just lowers magic damage just right off the just right off the break and the higher the trait is the higher the um the percentages is so if you have a max out that's 20 percent magic damage reduced easy um fantastic trait he has the flagellant skill um also with his basic attack you can uh apply p uh physical defense and magic defense uh debuff the level one debuffs I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of anything that applies debuffs. If you when you get the devout guard, it dispels up to three debuffs and it gives him a 40 percent HP and he uh, HP heal and he gets a P defense and magic defense two buffs. Also, he gets a the assisting cover up. So basically he can assist and and block damage up to two tiles. Uh, any anybody around him up to two tiles, which increases the trade effect that he has by 200%, and that lasts for two turns. And none of this can be dispelled or immunized. So devout guard will always be active. It'll always be used. You can keep it up, pretty much almost 100% uptime, no problem. Especially when you're using it with his, um, with. The, Especially when you're using it with flagellant, which gives that extra energy. It'll have pretty much 100% uptime. Really good. Probably his best skill, Devout Guard is his best skill. It makes him just so tanky and so powerful. He also has a magic damage AoE that inflicts attack to debuff for two turns. So you can lower down the attack damage of every, of you know, up to like, I think it's like a three by three tiles. And it lands just instantly uh, physical attack two down, which is great. And then he has a revival skill where it revives him up to 5% of his HP one time per battle. And he has a knockback that deals damage equal to 200% of his physical defense and up to 150% of his P attack. Overall, he's just a phenomenal unit and... You definitely want to focus on increasing his physical defense and his magic defense and just overall just make him just he just has so much utility he has carried me through a lot of content and again probably my top five one of my top five favorite characters currently out now you have lash and lash is a, a different unit as well um where she has a trait well let me pull that up first where she has a trait where after attacking she deals 20 uh she deals magic attack as piercing damage to the target and then after using a support or a heal skill she gets an additional heal to the target so if you heal you get additional heal percentages if you do an attack you're doing extra piercing damage so depending on how you want to build her she has an AoE that grants a magic defense to and immunity to disrupt to all allies which lasts for two turns 
She has a single target instant skill that heals 25% of target's HP. And if they are unharmed, it um, if, if they're unharmed, the effect changes and it gives the target damage to a magic defense to buff. That's another really uh, concurrent skill that you're going to see a um, a lot of the papal state units uh, units have that that light of sanctuary this is the skill that's really going to be something that again you're going to notice as a a, a as a, con a, con a constant um let's see where did, where did i leave off that okay yeah so she also has a single target piercing damage that equals 60 percent of her magic attack and then she has an AOE that inflicts cancel passive and cancel reaction skills lasting for two turns, which are really good debuffs um, to land on some on targets, especially if you know they're gonna have like a really powerful counter attack or some reaction skills that's gonna just you know overall do make them tougher. She'll be able to have those and this cancels those out. She has a reaction skill that decreases the damage and then it increases. Um, oh, sorry, flagellant. Um, no, actually, she doesn't have flagellant. I'm sorry. It's the. Am I losing my mind? Oh no, here it is. Yeah, so she has a skill where it reduces the damage, and then it also applies a debuff on anyone who attacks. <sighs> sorry. I'm saying that wrong. Anyone who attacks that has a debuff, it decreases the damage taken by additional 10% up to 30%. So the initial skill has an 8%. And then if that person has one debuff on them, it does 18% reduction. If they have three debuffs on them, it has 38% reduction. So it gives her a little bit of survivability. And since these characters are always gonna be giving out debuffs and they're always gonna be buffing themselves, there it's it's going to give them that um like she's always going to have that kind of survivability on her which is which is really good um i really like that and then lastly she has a energy ray which is like a shield break and then she has a line attack that does piercing damage for her so above all with lash she's all about you know giving out those debuffs so that um it keeps them weaker and then like she does have heals but her heals aren't anything great you know she has the soothing you know the, the soul soothing but she does have the m defense buffs right here but this was that aol that that aoe that grants the m defense to an immunity to disrupt you really are not going to use her for any of these skills you might get the light of sanctuary which is always a good skill to have but really, you're going to be focusing mostly on the debuffing skills and these debuffing abilities um, like Dark Withering, which also is an AOE that inflicts life loss. And it makes it so that they have the heal, uh, cancel healing receive, which lasts for two turns. Um, you're going to be focusing on those skills when it comes to Lash. Now, next up, we're going to have is Papal ice priest and this is kind of like the last one of the characters that really focuses on kind of like that attack of the stratagem or the debuffing so i so papal priest all his skills is pretty simple his trait increases his magic attack by 15 percent but also at the end of a turn it grants physical defense two to two random allies within two tiles around him so this skill is really nice because you're always going to want him to be in the center of the group of your of your uh, units and just giving free physical defense to to your units is really good. He has an AOE line skill that deals ice damage up to five tiles and gain and it gives the enemy speed one and move one debuffs. So it just makes them significantly slower. And that's something with all of his skills. Um, he has AOE damage skills that does the same thing, which gives a speed one and move one. He has a reaction skill where it decreases the damage. And then after he's attacked, it gives him damage reduction too. So it just makes him more tankier to surviving. 
He has another AoE skill, which gives speed one and move one debuff for two turns. He does have an AoE damage reduction aura, which 25% to all allies within three tiles, which is all the more reason why, again, that you want to keep him in the middle of your units so that it gives them that lot more survivability. And then he has a single target skill that gives speed one and move one debuffs for two turns. And then he has an AoE skill that grants physical defense to and immunity to defense attribute debuffs to all allies at the location for two tile radius. Um, above all, like Papal Ice Priest is all about just dishing out those debuffs and giving your allies physical uh, buffs so that you can always be faster than your targets and then the enemies so that your so that your team can just go in there and just wreck house his, his the speed debuffs and the move one debuffs are just so good and they've, they've been proven time and time again of being very powerful skills to have which allows you to just ramp up your damage and ramp up your defenses but also um decrease your enemies advantages especially if they have a fast team um always always good to have for that ice priest and now we're going to go into the other side and the other side is where you have units who get sick who get buffs when they have three buffs on them so we're going to start off with papal guard so papal guard has a trait where he gains block and then when he has three or more buffs, he gets physical damage taken as decrease and block chance is increased by 90%. So that's really good. So since you see how easy it is to give him buffs just from looking at like the Papal Ice Priest and Angel, like just seeing how easy it is to give buffs. If you give, if you have him maxed out to five star, which is easy because he's a rare, if you get him maxed out, he gets that block when then um, he gets that physical damage taken down to 15 percent and then he gets the block chances increased by 100 percent, which is really, really good. Um, let's see. He also gets the flagellant skill, which, as we talked about before, it gives 8 percent each stack and it recover and they recover one energy every time as long as he has stacks. He also gets into skill and vulnerability, um, which gives him damage reduction for mind's eye and immunity to disrupts, um, which is I, I, I took that skill for granted because I thought I didn't like it. But then once I used it, it's nice that like damage reduction for is really good with the 40 percent. And then the mind's eye, it activates block once the um, after taking a back attack so if someone's going to hit him from the behind he flips him around and activates block and then immunity to disrupts is just really good because you can cancel out move series you know anything that gives you immunity always always a benefit to have he has a skill which is uh which guard which takes physical attacks within two tiles radius around him and then it gives him 20 percent physical defense so he'll take physical damage for your units as long as they're within two tiles of him he has a skill called heavy armor, which gives him a physical shield with a value of 25 of his HP at the start of a turn. And that's where you're kind of going to see his, his skills because he, he's going to be getting a lot of physical shields and the physical shields, you, they, they stack up and it's really nice on him. Um, he gets a defensive stance, which is an instant. And that gives a, another physical shield with a value of 25%. And it gives him block enhancement. And what block enhancement is, is that when he's hit from a physical attack from front or the side, there is a 100% chance to trigger a block. And it decreases the damage taken by 10%. So just more survivability. He gets endurance activation, which when he's healed, he gets a damage reduction to skill. And then lastly, he has a, a skill called Hoplite Attack, where he does a single attack, which gives him a 15% H, um, physical shield, 15% of his HP. So with him, you definitely want to give him a lot of hit points uh, just so that he can constantly be using his skills and increasing his um, shields. Um, he's a really good, really good unit. Um, I've used him for a lot of hard content just so that he can survive. 
I definitely you know, I definitely recommend using him if you don't have a solid defender um, like a you know if you don't have like a, um if you don't have suppression well suppression is really good for magic if you need like a, a good physical defense unit and you don't have one like everyone should have Metha but he just provides a different type of defense using those shields it's really nice really nice now next up we're going to talk about is divine grace so divine grace his trait is he gets a physical attack buff and then additionally when he has three buffs he gets a damage buff on top of that so what that means is is that you, get him, you know if you get him five stars he's going to get 15 percent physical attack and then if he has three buffs on him it's going to be a 35 percent damage on top of that 15 percent which means that he's just going to be doing significantly more damage he has a aura which is a crit command which gives 20 percent crit rate for all allies within two tiles around him so that's kind of another reason why you have that whole you stay close around your other units because that aura that gives that is just really good to um, have that additional crit rate and so far i think he's the only person that has that skill right now i don't i don't you know if, if you know another unit that has crit command put it in the comments down below he has a skill that's a reaction skill that gives him damage to for one turn after he's healed he also has an instant single target healing skill which um actually we've talked about it he has and this is again the light of sanctuary skill um and you a lot of you a lot of the papal units have this and it's just it's just really good um, especially having a dps unit that also heals and you can also apply those um those damn those two buffs on them so it's just a nice little utility skill to have he also has to protect it as well which again as long as he has no debuffs and he has three buffs on him that's a 15 percent attack and 30 percent defense steroid so it gives him that sustainability and you shouldn't have any debuffs on him and you should have buffs on him just judging from all of the units that we ha that we've talked about so far that gives buffs and an angel of course removing debuffs um he also has his last skill which is like a physical attack skill which is like his strongest skill storm sniping which deals damage uh, 120 percent damage to one enemy and the further the damage is the the further the, the target is the more damage it does so if they're right in his face it's zero but then two tiles three tiles four tiles five tiles it increases by 10 percent so technically you can have a hundred and sixty hundred and sixty percent damage which is really nice and yeah so that's divine grace really good unit to have um does a lot of good damage on him he's he's, he's pretty he's pretty strong he's pretty strong um next up we're going to talk about is blade and blade is blade is something else all right like blade's entire kit is just ridiculous and highly recommend using him if you are looking for really powerful seekers um and he just kind of he kind of just puts all of the the papal stratagem together um he's a very central high-end dps uh very important for the if you're trying to make a papal states team so his trait uh, he performs assisting attack against all enemies within three tiles around him. He also dispels one buff and he can and it can be used once per round. And then on top of that, when he has three buffs or more, it increases his crit rate by 15%. He also has a skill called Hunting Impulse, which increases his crit rate by 15% before attacking. And if the target is killed, he gets three energy. His basic attack can inflict cancel dodge debuff. He also has the skill Shapeless Lupine Blade, which increases his crit rate and his crit damage by 15% and ignores assisting cover when a target is in injured state. He has a skill that gives him a dodge for one turn and if, the, and then if that dodge is succeeded, he teleports behind the unit that attacked him, 
deals damage and then gives him another dodge for one turn. He also has a reaction for when he's healed, he gets a damage to buff. We've seen that multiple times. He also has another reaction that decreases the damage, but it gives him move two for two turns. So it gives him more mobility so you can choose one or the other. He also has a passive in which he attacks someone who is, if he attacks someone who's unharmed, he deals 20% more physical damage. And when he does a back attack on an unharmed unit, he inflicts cancel passive skills for one turn. And then just to add on to all of that, he has maneuver, which after he attacks, he's able to move again, depending on how much movement he has. He also just have to add on top of that. He's, he also has that really good skill that we were talking about light of sanctuary. So, you know, Again, an, another attacker who has Light of Sanctuary, which just does a tw at 25% HP heal, and if the person is unharmed, it does a um, damage to and magic defense buff on him for two turns. And then he also has Fantasy Footwork, which he takes 50% less AoE damage, and he gains two dodges. Blade is just, he has a fully loaded kit. He's a really strong, really powerful unit. Like I said, if you're looking for a really good seeker and you or you know if you're just looking to add more seekers because you're because you like them, Blade is the way to go. He's really powerful, really strong, really strong character. Now, kind of wrapping up the lower end units, we have the Papal Pikeman. Um, hers is it's it's nowhere near as loaded as what Blade is. Her her whole thing is just very simple. Get more, uh, get more physical attack, do more damage, rinse, repeat. So her trait, um, it gives her a physical attack increase. And if she has three buffs, her basic attack has more than one, it has a one tile additional range. Um, pretty straightforward. She has a skill called Draconic Flash Step, which deals 80% damage in a line. It ignores blocks and it gives her a parry for two turns. She has a reaction that when she is hit, she decreases the damage, but also gets a damage to buff for three turns. We've seen that one very common. She has a skill called strength activation, where if she gets healed, she receives 10% more healing and she gets damage to buff for one turn. She has a passive that increases her physical attack by 8% and before attacking dispels one defense attribute buff from one target so if someone gets if they're getting buffed she'll just strip that away from them and then attack and do damage she also has of course the protected i mean like why not why not give this to her and then she has a single target uh attack that has shield break two and then she has a support skill that performs alert for two tiles that does physical aoe attack on any enemy in those tiles it's an okay skill. Um, it's a, it has a really good damage percentage. It's just that the the range of it is like very small. You can see it right there. The range is very small. So she Pikeman, her whole thing is just do a lot of damage and just again just do a lot of damage. Like she she keeps it nice and simple. No no tricks or anything. She's pretty straightforward. Now the last character we're going to talk about is the only legendary on this list that we're going to talk about. And the reason because is that Leonide and Garcia has nothing to do with the Papal State strategy. Um, they're really good damage dealers, don't get me wrong, but their skills and their kits, it doesn't, it has nothing to do with what those Papal State units um, skill sets are. Um, I mean, I guess you can talk about, you know, how they have, you know, they have, they do have the ability to debuff, uh, their targets, but they're just very strong units. So, but the last character we're going to talk about is Samantha. Samantha is also just like Blade, a fully loaded kit. Her trait gives her, her trait gives all other allies within three, within a three tile radius around her 10% increased healing. And if an ally is injured in the injured state, after getting hit, she uh, uses one energy to heal them and activates twice per turn. She also has the skill to protect it, but then she, but then she also has this really good skill 
like right here, which is called the Sacred Sanctuary. Um, Samantha grants all allies within five tiles around her damage reduction three and healing receive three for two turns. And she also gives herself regenerate extra. And then with the regenerate extra, what that does is it heals the ally within the lowest HP with 50% of the M attack within three tiles at the end of the turn. And then she also expands the range of her trait to five tiles instead of three tiles. And it cancels the energy consumption when triggered, lasting for one turn. That's just a really good skill. Um, probably, it's not probably, it is like her most powerful, her strongest skill, which really makes her trait just kind of blow up. And then not being able, not using energy is just really good and just adds that extra healing. So fantastic. She, she also gets the skill where she recovers one energy on a basic attack or her next healing is 15%, which, you know, you can, I personally like the energy. Um, she gets Light of the Celestial Purge, which deals 30% damage to all enemies within five tiles. And then it also dispels three of their buffs and it removes three of your allies, de um, your allies debuffs. So that skill right there can really just refresh, you know, if you're not using Angel, that skill will really just remove all the debuffs on your team because your team really shouldn't have more than there should be no reason why your team should have more than three debuffs on them if they are you're doing something wrong but that light of celestial is just going to remove those debuffs really nice she also has a really cool skill which is called um devout faith it's a reaction skill where she gains resolve if she if the character has three energy so what resolve is is that it returns the character to battle after being defeated and recovers some hp so if she gets killed as long as she has three energy she'll come back with 70 percent of her hp and you can use it twice per battle really nice skill um really good the only other character that i've seen that has something similar to that was suppression i do think there's like another tank that has a skill like that but to have that on a healer is really good um she has another skill which is called radiant stamp and what that one does is is that it heals all it heals herself and all allies within two tiles around the the, the center target for 40 percent of her magic attack and then whoever was in that 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 main target they receive an additional 40 percent heal and then after being healed all of the targets get damage one and physical defense one for two turns um so just adding on to why that she gives buffs and damage increases and in physical defense buffs and she heals a lot just with that skill right there she also has some attack skills um she has one that's like a magic aoe that's in a line up to five tiles um it inflicts cancel active skills on them for on targets for two turns which is really nice um because you'll be able to lock them up for their so they can only do physical skills for two turns but also for every enemy that she hits in that line she gets two energy um this one does have a cooldown of four uh which is you know pretty long but i mean being able to get you know re-up on your energy and to make it so that they can't use skills for active skills for two turns is a really strong and then she has another skill which gives her energy restoration so at the end of a turn she recovers one additional energy and if she has no energy she gets an additional energy so if she has zero energy she'll get two energy and if she has one energy she'll get one energy pretty easy and then the last thing that she really has is a magic attack single target which heals an ally 50 percent of her magic attack um samantha is really good for the for the whole strategy itself so if you want to go ahead and make a papal team what you're looking at is basically making your enemies weaker while making your character stronger you're going to have characters who are going to make your enemies weaker while making you stronger when you have characters like suppression who's dishing out debuffs and also soaking in magic defense and you run and you probably noticed that they all pretty much give you some sort of magic defense increase so content where it uses against mages 
it's going to be it's going to be really really strong really powerful they're going to be able to hunt them down kill them off you keep them close to each other because a lot of them have auras which allows you know, which allows other people in the group in order to buff up and it's just going to be pretty much you just going as a team and once as you're moving as a team as a unit you're going to keep each other strong you're going to keep everyone else weak and you're going to dish out decent damage so that's the papal uh stratagem in a nutshell i hope you guys like the video if you want to see more videos just remember please like subscribe uh as long we're trying to hit a thousand by the end of the year and so we can do this giveaway and yeah so that's it you guys take care of yourselves i'll catch you in another video peace